Uneducated, unfiltered, unhinged. This is the Mangina Dialogues. We at it again. With your host, Nick Scopes. And the Gregolicious. You know how we do, cause you know we keeping it gangster and silly. Unplugged like a fool swung titty. About get kitty, cause you know we down to the nitty and the gritty. And we make shit sound so damn pretty. Yeah, cause this unhinged comedy. And right now you're in the mix. So get ready, cause we bout to get it poppin'. We ain't stopping. I'm educated, I'm filtered unhinged. This the man down at that loss. We had it again. Oh man, I couldn't stop looking at Frank's face the whole time. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic that theme song. It reminds me of my best friend Suicide. I love it. <laughs> Great. Okay, and that's the episode. Um, no, just <laughs> welcome to the Mangina Dialogues. I am your host, Nick Scopes. I'm Greg Alicious. Today we have the, the guy, your guy's resume. I'm not even going to list off. You guys have so much stuff in your resume. You guys are the hosts of the new podcast, Jiffy Pop Culture. Frank Liotti and Isla Mel. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thanks for having us. Hi. I was looking through, like doing some research. You know, Frank, I know you a little bit. And I was going through and I found your IM, IMDB. Yeah. All these lists. My favorite thing on here is, it says, Frank Liotti has portrayed criminals and addicts. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. I wrote that on, <laughs> on HBO's High Maintenance. Lists a million shows, Law & Rest for You. But my favorite part, it goes, he filmed a pilot for the Logo Network called Everyone's a Little Gay. Couldn't they come up with a better title? I mean, <laughs> really? I just wanted to ask you about that. It seemed awesome. I'd watch something Well, like that. we all contributed humor to it. You know, it was like that talking head show. I told them I thought the show should have been called AIDS, but they wanted to call it Everyone's a Little Gay, Nick. <laughs> That's <laughs> why it was didn't funny. Get it Mateo Lane was, all, it was funny. It was so funny. And uh, they have, Logo had no programming. They had RuPaul's Drag Race. It amazes me that that didn't get picked up. Regina DiCicco, Mateo Lane, myself, there were just some funny people on it and it never got made. It's weird. Interesting, man. Funny yeah, though, yeah. Nick, that's funny that you brought you wrote you you started with that because I I wrote all these notes down that I was gonna actually ask the exact same thing. I was gonna mention that Nick should have also been in that in that pilot. Everyone's a little gay, um, maybe more than a little. And and my favorite my favorite role, Frank, that you're listed on your IMDb is as the sleazy guy in Men We Trust. <laughs> Yeah, and it was in the it was in the it's disgusting. It's awful. It's awful. So it's the, Isla and I always talk about it. It's not it's not called show friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I I just if I was ever gonna be in on that side of the camera and do something, I would just I I would have to play the sleazy guy. Like that would be my dream role, and then I would just call it quits. Like I got to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Show business has always seen me as that. It's funny because <laughs> I don't know what, like, what a straight guy say? I get lots of pussy. Like as a gay dude, I do really well, but in show business, like, or even in life, like when I first got out of graduate school, I got a job at Orso on restaurant row. Right. Which is the Joe Allen's guy's Italian restaurant next door. It's a theater restaurant, you know? And a waiter called me right when I got home. I lived on that block. And he said, hi, I'm the guy that trained you today. Do you want to go on a date with me? And I was like, uh, <laughs> no. And he said, by the way, they're not going to call you. They're not going to call you back because the owner thinks you look like a mafia guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I should, if, if I knew then what I know now, I could have sued. But it's like, what the fuck do I look like to the world? It's crazy. It's really because I don't have that in my head. You know, I let, and I talk about like Barbara Streisand and Charlotte Ray. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck are they seeing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jesus. Just the look. It's the Italian look. I get the same yeah. one too once in a while. Yeah. Same shit. And my last name's Scopoletti, so it doesn't help anything once they right. hear that last name. You know how it is, right. Biotti. I do. Now, now, Isla, you are the author of Project One Ray, the book, show yes. that changed fashion. So how did you two meet up? How did you guys? Oh, well, we met up in theater camp a long, long time ago. How old were wow. we? Wow. Oh, boy. I was, I, I, I think I was about to turn 13. Yeah, but he looked eight. 
Yeah, I didn't hit puberty until I was 40. And I looked 20, and I was the same age. <laughs> Holy we shit. Fair. <laughs> theater camp. Now, where was theater camp at? It, um, it was on Long Island called Uzan. Yeah, Wheatley Heights. Yeah. Drama camp. Right. Yeah. 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 But I'm not gay, yeah. No. <laughs> no. Wow. That sounds like I a love- wet, hot American summer. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. None of the none of the faggots wanted to get their hair wet. Isla, Isla was in musical theater, though I was in drama. Yeah, I was a little bit a step ahead of Frank in that respect. <laughs> oh, I see. But we were at that age where, when someone is one year older, it's like you know, whoa, they're the big kids, they're the older kids. Right. How did how did we first connect? Like how I did. Have- no idea. Yeah, that I, don't I was remember. probably wearing something related to Rocky Horror, and you came up Maybe. to me. <laughs> Maybe it could yeah. be. Yeah, she was a nut. I was. I like how <laughs> we just commandeered the show, and they're not talking at all, and it's just us. <laughs> oh no, that's ourselves. fine. That's, that's why absolutely we're here. fine. We're <laughs> cool with that shit. <laughs> we're we're just gonna wait until someone figures out that you were each other's first kiss at camp. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> no, that wasn't, no. I no, had kissed I always... long before. <laughs> yes, you had. Oh, she okay, had. so you're experienced. Very cool. And I look like I looked like an Italian Hillary Swank in Boys Don't Cry at that age. <laughs> it's so very it wasn't, true. Yeah, it wasn't. She wouldn't have been interested. <laughs> Dude, if you guys, have you guys, because, you, you know, in your podcast, you go back a lot and you talk about a lot of the old stuff. Do you guys have photos of yourselves at theater camp, like back then? Yes, we do. <laughs> Frank looks I, like he's confused. No, because I, we've talked about this a few times on the podcast. I was in Comac and Isla was in Howard Beach. Which is Queens. So, which is Queens. Gotcha. And Comac is Long Island. And I have pictures of when she came to visit me once, which was like a big deal. You <laughs> know, like so back far. then. Because yeah. it was so far. And I have them. I do have them somewhere. But that was later, right? That's when we went to that amusement park and you forced me to go on a roller coaster and I still had nightmares. What amusement park? Which amusement park? Adventureland, I think. Probably Adventureland. Yeah, that's what it was. The movie, they made a movie about it, which for some reason it takes place in Pittsburgh, even though it was Long Island and all the characters were so Long Island. But that was where, yeah, it was adventure. (laughs) Do they have big roller coasters in Adventureland? They had one that was like, it's like if you fall off the roof when you're hanging Christmas lights. It's not, I was just, I, was I like just staying not. on the ground. I don't like going up. <laughs> I, was, I know I've been there or by there, and I don't recall seeing anything that looked higher than like the roof of a tall station wagon. <laughs> anything that's called Adventureland is not my thing. <laughs> Uh, For some reason, a lot of Long Islanders call it Adventures in. <laughs> like I N N. It may have been named that at one point, or maybe they just can't read. They can oh. spell Trump. They spell Trump <laughs> and Wall. W A L L and Trump. Trump and Gabagool and <laughs> Tanning. That's it, yeah. <laughs> tanning. Oh my God, yeah. I always <laughs> liked Long Island. People always gave it shit. I mean, I know you, you, you grew up there, I guess, so it's like, eh, but I no, would go no, visit. It, it was. It was fun. Isla, tell them what we saw when we were driving to our photo shoot. We saw a guy in a pickup truck truck with, what was it, Trump flags? Or a guy in a truck. I was driving, so I couldn't see it. Three or four Trump flags blowing in the wind, hanging from the back of his giant flags that said, no more bullshit, Trump 2020. And so I, I, wanted, said, I needed to get a mental picture of what he looked like. I had a picture in my mind, but I thought it must be a stereotype. So I said, what's he wearing? Right. And I said he has a camouflage hat on, yep. no shirt, and great tits, man tits. <laughs> and she said, "That's how I pictured him." Exactly. <laughs> was this recently? Exactly. Was it like it was two, weeks. two weeks ago. Okay. Was it a white pickup truck? Do you remember? Was it you? No, it wasn't. Me. <laughs> yes, it was Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Because I, I saw a white pickup truck, enormous, like way overdone pickup truck with two enormous Trump flags hanging off the back, driving oh, through our town. That's commonplace. In, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, I guess. I saw, I, saw, I saw one on the LIE the other day. It's, it's, it's common. Yeah. It's interesting. That's Long, Island, Long Island's fun as shit, dude. I fucking Ooh. love half, half my roommates from college are from Long Island. And I had a buddy who played football at Stony Brook. I'd go visit him all the time. Where did you grow up, Nick? 
uh, first half of my life was Westchester, Mamaroneck. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I lived in Mamaroneck, and then I moved up to the sticks here in Connecticut when I was like 14. But oh, I see. All the roots okay. are in New York. So I loved it. Right. It was so fun. See, if this were our podcast, Isla, we would say that's Nick's background is Act One of Plaza Suite, visitor that's from right. Mamaroneck. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. the couple in the beginning, the Neil Simon play. We have a Broadway reference for almost everything we talk almost about. Almost everything. That's wild. So yeah. tell us about tell us about this podcast. Like I've been seeing, I've been really paying attention to the Grease post, as as Greg said, I'm right. like a fan. But like, how did this come to be? So Frank came to visit me one day. We were sitting in my backyard, just what two months ago. Socially distancing at the picnic table. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's and what we so were doing, just, though. It is good. So good. we were just having our normal conversation, and I said, "This should be a podcast." And that was it. And Frank said, okay. <laughs> so what were you talking about? What, were, what, what movie were you talking or TV were you talking about? I have, I have a list of them. Probably like, Eyes of Laura Mars that day. That's, that's a big one for us. That's her favorite. I liked Eyes of Laura Mars, but I only liked the photo shoots and the murders. The rest of it's, well, that's you too, though. The rest of it's it a is. dud. Yeah, the romance might have like. It might have been the Betty Broderick story. We it talked a lot that. about that. That because, the Meredith backs to Bernie, right? And at the at the time, Dirty John was on, and they were doing a Betty Broderick storyline with Amanda Peet. Yeah, which was, was great. good. But we talked about we talked about female trouble and pink flamingos, Don, yes. John Waters stuff, ordinary right. people, one day at a time, good times, terms of endearment, the Brady Bunch, Fallen <laughs> Angel, that TV movie no one's yeah. ever heard of. <laughs> It's Did a TV you, movie about child pornography. Yeah. Who is, no Who is in it? Who is in it? Who is in it? Dana Hill. Do you rem remember her? Dana Hill. She was, she was one, in of, one the, of the vacations. Yeah. The European uh, yeah. one. The bad one. Oh, the, uh, yeah, I know who. Okay, yeah. I know who she is. Not by name, but by She band. always played a 12-year-old, even though she was like 24, and then she died. Yeah, she died Sorry, really young. I'm laughing. Oh, yeah, really? Young. <laughs> yeah, Frank finds that hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. Um <laughs> well, how'd she die? Do you know? Diabetes. She midgetitis. I don't diabetes. I no, think. I think it was diabetes. I think he's yeah. right. Midgetitis. Yeah. I think. Uh, are you guys going to do like the after-school special? Like, do you obviously remember those? Of it's course. on. It's on our. You can't see it. This no, looks like see. when you get the light at a comedy show. It's yeah, on right? the list. <laughs> we wrote after-school specials. Yeah. What are some of them? Please don't hit me, mom. What did we talk about? Stone with Scott Baio. <laughs> Which one's the one that I find fucking hilarious? It's the one with Ben Affleck and it's steroids. I didn't even know oh, Ben Affleck yeah. was in one. Yeah, he's in one of them. Yeah. That wow. shit is so... It's like, it reminded me of like uh, when Reefer Madness came out, that old movie, like, if you smoke weed, you're going to go yeah. nuts. And they do the yeah. same thing with like steroids, like breaks everything in his house. It's so... Oh, ridiculous. yeah. There's an amazing one where Helen Hunt, her boyfriend strong arms her into trying... I guess, <laughs> Angel dust, right? I think so, right? That's a real Is 70s it? drug, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she flings herself the first time out of the, out of the, one of those high schools, like the Fast Times at Ridgemont High High School, she flings herself out of the third story window yeah. and lives. She gets up and tries to still get the bugs off of her. Because <laughs> they always see bugs on 70s drugs on their skin. Oh, you guys have such incredibly good memories, like to be able to remember the yes. details of those. Very like I, I remember them all. I don't remember. I couldn't tell you a person that was in one or a detail of them, but I could tell you that they were all about pregnancy, drugs, booze, right. something. You yeah, know. But I can't remember a fucking password, but we remember <laughs> what we wore on the last day of camp. Right. Yeah. That's important to us. We were saying yesterday, I don't know what our lives would be like if we never watched TV or movies because we'd have nothing to talk about. So what what have you been watching? Like, forget the old stuff, like the stuff you guys are going to cut. Like, what are you watching now to entertain? Oh, God. Entertain oh, what? Penis. What is yeah. it called? Pen, pen 15. But I think you say penis. I don't know how you pronounce Wait, it. It's what on is Hulu. this? What's huh? happening? What is it? It's so good. It's, it's good. Yeah, it is it's good. Two women who are in their 30s play middle schoolers. And it's so awkward. Every episode is the most awkward thing you've ever seen. And but the, it's whole, great. The, but the rest of the cast are all 12. So you yes. have these little prepubescent kids that they have crushes on, and they're like 30. <laughs> they're and like it 30. works. Yeah, I think it works so well because they're like the two of us. They went, they, yeah. the, the intro is 
they're, they're photographs of them when they were best friends at that age. Yeah. So they have this huge history together and they trust one another and let each other do their thing. And it's them in middle school, but with an awareness of who they were and what was cruel and it, it's, you know, how they reacted to it then with the newfound maturity in the subtext. It's pretty brilliant. It really What's it on? Might do that. What is it on? It's on Hulu. Oh, on yeah. Hulu. Okay. Oh, I'll watch that. That sounds interesting. Well, we also watched Pose. We just did an episode about that. We did yeah, an episode it. about that. Why? You afraid? <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, I have this giant list of stuff I want to watch, and I just, I don't ever watch anything. Like truly, I, I just don't put the TV on really that much anymore on my right. iPad. I'm just working or fucking around on our podcast stuff. And I used to, I mean, I used to travel every like other week back and forth from New York to LA, and that's when I would do all my watching. Like I would watch right. everything on the plane, and now I haven't done that in seven months. Like I don't even know where to start. I just watched that Charlie Kaufman movie that's on Netflix. I'm thinking of ending things, and I'm still confused. Really? I'm watching it a week ago. It's so confusing, yeah. I watched The Babysitter Part 2. Oh, a classic. And it, well, it got a review because it, they, it's, they said it was one of those so bad, it's good. It and the original, good. the original one is that chick who's in uh, not Knives Out. What's the other one that's just like it, where they all try and kill the bride? Game, <laughs> right, and game thing, thing, yeah. 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 She looks just like Margot Robbie, but with an, a severe eating disorder. She's really thin, and she's hot now, so they made a remake of it, and she does a cameo, but it's kind of like, it's hard to talk about modern stuff, and this is a perfect example, because it's, it's really about this almost comic book-like generic look that they hire with actors. They hire, they all look chiseled, you know, regardless yeah. of race, they all have white person comic book features. They're all kind of homogenized, it's, it's boring. There's no, nobody really cares if you're really funny or really talented. It's like, if you're really kind of hot, according to Hollywood hot and can speak, they're like, that's enough, that's good, that'll get views. <laughs> so we end up with projects like, we're talk, we talk about Fame, the original 1980 movie, where nobody looks like a supermodel, but they're great and they're gritty and it's real and it's interesting. Like we're interested, I think, in the same sensibilities and that's, that I think is the, the listener that we're cultivating so far. Right. You like gritty. I've been watching. Yeah, uh, I just I just finished uh, Narcos. I'm on Narcos Mexico now, but I finished. I thought that is it was good? I, very well. Anything that's true as well. Like I like the history part of it, and it's just. I mean, it's it's crazy to think that like Pablo Escobar was making 420 million dollars a week, shipping wow. tons. I mean, like the U S was doing 350 tons of cocaine a year at this point, And he was providing like 80% of it. <gasps> it wow. I probably did some of it. That's amazing. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's crazy to watch. Like imagine in this country, if you had uh, a billionaire who killed a thousand cops, 200 judges and was blowing things up and everyone still loved him because he built houses for the poor. It was like the, we, he held a country wow. hostage. It was really, don't we kind of have that now? <laughs> Not that bad. <laughs> Not that bad, but... Not killing a thousand yeah. cops and judges to get his way, but... No, but well, this COVID. One's just, just poor this people. One's, this just, one's killing a thousand black people and, yeah. you know, not letting us do cocaine. So. <laughs> <laughs> Six of one, half That's dozen what we other. need, dude. We need more cocaine. But, yeah, I looked up... But to, to talk about what you were talking about, I looked up what the guys looked like. Like, what they really... The actors uh, versus yeah. the guys... <laughs> really right. looked like in real life right i mean they they got it kind of close but it was uh yeah not even some of them yeah. were not even close oh, come on it was right. like when what's his name on entourage was playing him in the in the fake movie you know that they were producing adrian the little, yeah oh uh, the, the the buzz kill cock block from devil wears prada that ruins her career <laughs> right. Right. yeah we think of him in terms of that movie not entourage. i know I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw him in real life. He's borderline, uh, borderline midget. He, you know, he also was in a band or has a band. Really? Yeah. And well, I don't know if he does anymore, but like 10 years ago, I was consulting for this entertainment company that was putting on a New Year's Eve concert weekend in Miami. And last minute they hired his band to play. Oh. It just as like one of the opening acts, not on New Year's Eve. And it it was so bad. 
Um, <laughs> like so bad. I, and the only reason, like, it just, it's just to your point, like these guys get these things because they have chiseled features. Right. I mean, it was, it was so bad. And that's a tricky thing. Going from actor to musician never seems to work as often as the other way around. Yeah. I, it's the one time I remember working Juliet Lewis and the licks. They were pretty good. Yeah. She's they were great. pretty, she she's was a great. rock and, you know, and she yeah, really also, had a kind of, yeah. The girl, have you heard, you know, the band, the pretty reckless? No. Yeah. Check them mm-hmm. out. It's um, I forgot the actress's name. She's the lead singer, but she sort of stopped acting just to focus on this band, the pretty reckless. Ah. And they're Jenny like, Lewis? no, no. Um, I'll Google it while we're talking, but okay. they're great. They're like kind of like, not really metal, but certainly harder. Right, right. It's a good band. Um, yeah, I forgot I was going to say something else about Adrian Grenier, but it doesn't well, matter. I have something to say. Yeah, so, look up the singer. So you guys have been friends for a while, right? You have this podcast together. Is there any like movie or show where you guys have completely differing opinions on it? For example, like one of you is like, it's so great. And then another one's like, that's fucking terrible. I hate that show. Or do you all kind of... Like we talked about, you yeah. go. Well, I'm not nothing really severe. Like we talked about doing Heather's, and I don't love it, but Isla likes it. But I can probably do it. The the only one that I think we really that I remember us disagreeing on is Sharp Objects with Patricia yeah. Heaton and Amy Adams. Like that, I thought was dark and good, and I love the performances. And she didn't like it. But yeah. if we don't want to do the project. I mean, if we don't, like, it, it, it seems to be, and we're still so new, I think that if we're not on the same page or passionate, it doesn't really work because we have to have a conversation. Because right. our vibe is pretty positive. So to have one constantly disagree and the other not, we're not, we're not Siskel and Eber. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we're we, we're definitely kind of, not reviewers either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're definitely not reviewers. No. We can get really stupid. Like I we, bet we, you we your reviews, your reviews would be hilarious, though. I would enjoy. They're fun. They'd be filthy. I guess <laughs> Very so. dirty. I guess so. We are talking. Like, see how put together and beautiful she is. But she's the first person I ever say heard say turn of the phrase clitoris leechman. I mean, <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> thought it. Everybody's oh. thought it. Everyone thought it, but she was the only one brave enough to say it. Yeah, That's yeah. my pal. Did you put it in That's a book? That's right. You That's what we book? bonded over, clitoris. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it in the book? Interesting. <laughs> he was asking, Greg was asking if it's in the book. The one about film, the one about film stars. Before, yeah. tell them about those amazing first two books. I love that stuff. That's yeah, I want to talk about that. Well, this sort of has to do with what you guys were talking about because I wrote books about casting for television and movies. Right. And like the dishy stories behind who was cast and who wasn't. And so I spoke to a lot of producers and casting directors and they just flat out told me, we don't care that much about acting. That doesn't matter as much as looks. And it's really, you know, chemistry. So, you know, that's why you have what you have now. It wasn't like that in the 70s and the 80s. Right. So in, in, in that, you know, in all that research, like what was the most shocking or, or surprising or, you know, a few that, that come to mind? There's so much. I mean, I could go on for days, but so Margaret Mitchell, who wrote Gone with the Wind, wanted Groucho Marx to play Rep Butler, which seems uh-huh. insane. Wow. Um, Danny Thomas was the first choice to play the Godfather. No. Wow. Yeah. Come it's on. crazy. And what's Rosie his name? O'Donnell he... was up for a lane on Seinfeld. Oh my God. I know. Who was? Wait, who was? Wow. Who? Rosie O'Donnell. Oh. oh my God, that would have been quite. <laughs> and the different... person who actually came in sort of second to play Elaine was Megan Mullally. Yeah, that I knew. That, yeah, that she I've would heard. have been good. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I, I don't know, I've, I've, I, I love like reading those. All, and I'll, I'll actually read your book because it really is fascinating. Yeah. Like, They're great. You know, actually, you know, even though it did go a different way with like kind of a princess playing Elaine, I can see Rosie, a New Yorker, playing that role if it had gone, especially back then. Yeah. yeah. Before before she kind of succumbed to depression and politics and kind of not having an awareness of other people around her. Yeah. When she was really a performer, I I can see her pulling that off. She was a New Yorker and she was talented. She was she was funny. 
So to see her with, you know, Jerry Seinfeld and, and the crew, I can kind of almost see that. Mm -hmm. But one, uh, the one that she told me that I always thought was funny was um, Archie Bunker, Carol O'Connor is the skipper on yeah. Gilligan's Island. <laughs> I think that would have changed the path of not only his life, but television history. Yeah, definitely. You know? He wouldn't have been Archie. Right, but That's your other point book yeah. is Mickey Rooney. Yes, Mickey right. Rooney is Archie Bunker. That's the name. Yeah, that that is very strange. <laughs> and Mickey Rooney didn't do it because he said, if you put that on TV, they're going to shoot you dead in the streets. Right. I know. Mickey Rooney, is, is he still alive? He's an Abe Vigoda. Who's no. the other Abe Vigoda? No, he's not. About? No, who did we say yesterday was the new Abe Vigoda? You told me. You told me they were still alive. Michael Caine, that's who you said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys have, have to do you have to do that Michael Caine movie, Blame It on Rio. Oh, I thought you were going to say Dress to Kill. Yeah, yeah we, we like to play with on Rio. But, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. It, it's kind of straight for us. <laughs> yeah, we like to keep it like where we a minute. have to straight, cut a lot the, of it. The two daughters wind up sleeping with their the fathers. The, the two guys, Michael Caine. I know, but it's like male fantasy. That's not our thing. That's no. a Tuesday on Fire Island. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, we prefer Michael Caine in Death Trap, where he's okay. kissing Christopher Reeve. When he's kissing <laughs> Christopher Lee Reeve, and he's like, am I, do you feel it yet? Do you feel it yet? <laughs> Right. All right, that, that was pretty But anyway. You I'm totally sorry. have Nick's attention. Nick is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was so funny. <laughs> I'm going to isolate that clip. <laughs> Now, what time is it? 20 now. minutes? All right, we got it. Well, that's our whole show. These isolated things. I told a story in our Grease episode. Remember, Frank, your favorite Which? story? About Which? when my cleaning lady found my dildo, not dildo, my vibrator, and left it on the, my dresser for me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It was, it was purple. I asked if she cleaned it. I was going to ask the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been purple. funnier if you found it in the bathroom. <laughs> mm, yeah. I didn't keep it long after that, anyway. <laughs> if it fell out from under her skirt when she was leaving. <laughs> I wiped it off and put it away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he didn't know how to process that. He's like, what? All right, sorry. We're very dirty. We'll, oh, we'll don't, watch ourselves. Please. No, we're not. We're Listen, normal. If I, read, if I read you the texts in my phone from Nick Mia saying, hey, Nick, what's going on? And, and his response to that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It's, <laughs> one thing I kind of love about our podcast is, first of all, it connects me to who I was when I was that age, which was a lot softer and a lot sweeter. And I think that I see it connect Isla to who she was when she was that age. Definitely. Like, like she's focused so much on fashion, right. which is so, I mean, it's great, but it certainly is PC. Yeah. You know, I, I think that you can't, you have to be so gentle and careful. And it's fun seeing her let down the walls and go there again because she's a brilliant comic. She has a comic's mind. She really does. You know? Like she used to call her stepfather Mr. Van Damme from Diary of Anne Frank because he would steal food in the night. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that shit. We were 12 and 13. I know. We created these whole scenarios for ourselves. Can I just tell them that thing? You can tell them, yeah. We couldn't get into an R-rated movie, so we had to go see Karate Kid. And we were not and happy it's like, about it. It would be like sending Sid Vicious and Courtney Love to go see Karate Kid. We couldn't have less <laughs> interest in it. <laughs> so Mr. Miyagi gets Danny LaRusso's mother some flowers, and she says like, oh, I know just where to put it. Right. And the two of us in the we Comac Multiplex- We didn't hear it that way. <laughs> we heard like, I know where to stick it, which right. was like from nine to five. And then we were like, stick it up my ass or whatever. And we created a whole character over this one <laughs> woman in the movie who has two lines. And we, we gave her like friends, like a whole backstory. We just, we had wild. I mean, one friend was faster than the speed of light and she spoke like, do her voice, Camilla. <laughs> That's it. That was I it. just so did was, the, the dictionary. <laughs> that was the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> like we were out of our fucking mind. The people in front of us probably wanted to annihilate us in the yeah. movies. <laughs> we, were, we were just always, we wanted to see Pope from Greenwich Village. <laughs> and we couldn't. We couldn't. <laughs> you should write that story into like a, uh, into a, into like a spinoff, like spinoff comic book. Yeah. Or we, should. we actually should. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> 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 that's fucking so funny so ha what so, okay so you're a writer like what is what do you 
consider yourself by trade a writer? A writer, obviously. yeah. So are you writing now? Like, what are you, besides the podcast, what are you doing? I am. I have a book proposal that is going, well, it's in the hands of publishers right now. So we're waiting to finalize a deal. So right. that's very exciting. So I can't really say what it is, but it actually has to do with Broadway and not fashion. So it's a little bit of a change for me. And it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. So I'm very excited about it. That's awesome. Good luck with that. Thank you. Frank, what are you doing besides being our first guest to literally do the interview laying down? <laughs> you know what it is? My apartment, seriously, it looks like an episode of Borders and the After. Like, when they take, like, it's like, this is the only corner that looks okay. And even that is a dog bed behind it. With, like, every, it's, it's, it's brutal. Um, he's on I'm a waiting. couch, but it looks like he's in bed. Yeah, I'm, I'm on a couch. The other option is I hung a black sheet on the wall, but my hair blends into the black sheet, and I look, I look like Nick. I look bald. <laughs> and I don't pull right. up bald well like you do. I don't. No, I, I don't know, because we have this thing. So all of my gigs were canceled. I was supposed to be on the road with Lampanelli, and I was supposed to be... Um, I had a lot of gigs in, like, Jersey and Connecticut, all booked in Atlantic City. Good stuff, like money stuff, and it's all canceled. So I've been working on the podcast and thinking about going back to school to be a speech pathologist. Really? Yeah, because I just, like, but when I think of it, I just imagine wearing scrubs and eating tuna fish sandwiches in the hospital cafeteria. Like, I want that life. <laughs> That's but I don't want to, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to have to deal with kids spitting in my mouth. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't want the real job part. I just want the tuna like, sandwiches and the sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> That's job. how I feel about hospitals. Get a job on a medical show. Just I don't know if, yeah. what they're, if they're filming. Yeah, shows. but I don't know if anything's even filming. So it's it's That's weird funny. for you know performers right now. I, I don't know. It's up in the air. But the podcast is certainly keeping us busy. And I have some gigs coming up. I have one in Jersey tomorrow, and then another one in Jersey at the end of the month at Uncle Vinny's. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Nice. It'll be fun. Is, we'll see. Yeah, in uh, East, East Brunswick. Is it inside or in his tent? No, not East Brunswick. That's Vinnie Brand. That's Stress Factory. Oh, oh, this, is oh okay. by the sh right. this is by the shore. Oh, the shore. And I don't know where it is, but like yesterday I saw a big protest of women holding signs like housewives throw your mask away and whatnot. And it's kind of an area like that. Oh, so I'm a little fun. concerned, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. <laughs> Get COVID for the art. Yeah, right. <laughs> when's the when's the last time you did because i mean literally i was telling isla before the week after you came to our club in south norwalk the world shut down so when was the last time you was that the last was time you did stand up it literally I mean, yeah it was your show and then the next week everything <laughs> shut down and i brought the disease to norwalk <laughs> <laughs> spreading uh i don't remember what the last was was that that close to the shutdown really yeah i thought i had more since then i've done a lot of virtual stuff which i hate i can't stand it this stuff i love like when someone asks questions and it's a talk type of thing it's fun but if i'm sitting here looking at a zoom screen of people staring at me like they're watching a lecture on statistics then it's yeah, right. horrible i can't right. just stand up like that yeah. What am I going to do? Call people out? You in the red hat. You look like you're having a biopsy. Like, you know, it's not funny. <laughs> it's not. You can't do it. <laughs> so I've done it online, but I hate it. I hate it. I can't make that work. It seemed, yeah. it seemed weird. I, I, I mean, I'm too, I feel like I was too new to stand up to start doing it through Zoom. Like, you know, I'm only two years in. So I was like, I don't know if this is what I should be doing. But it was a lot of yeah. people have had the same opinion you had. It's been weird. Yeah, I tried well, watching it too, and it's, it's just, you know, it's kind of tough it's to awful. even watch. Yeah. But I think that it's important as a stand-up or as any kind of performer to somehow, it's like going to the gym for your comedy. Like what Isla and I do keeps my head sharp. So yep. I constantly stay in the moment when we're together or when I watch something, I do write punchlines and stuff. Um, Phone. Is Our that your phone? always goes off. Yeah, when we are recording. Sorry. You have a house phone? She, she has yeah. 78 phones. So you can't imagine five? what I'm living with. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And it, There's noises and everywhere. Had, yeah. Do you have a phone booth outside of your, your house, too? <laughs> I live in a phone booth. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> no. yeah. She's quick. You're right, dude. She does have a comics mind. <laughs> she she really does. For real. But, um... Like what we do is like doing stand up, or if you do a live show on Instagram with followers every night, even if it's five or 10 people, that's like keeping it 
going so that when you do get back on stage, it's not that foreign. Right. You know, it's not a microphone and live people, but she, you know, we keep our minds sharp by doing that kind of thing. You know, and if it, and sometimes it doesn't work, just like a comedy show. We've had that. Yeah. We've had episodes that we just haven't used because we don't like them. Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> one today that we did over. Well, tell yeah. them why we had to do it over the first time. The first time was brilliant. But tell them why. <laughs> Because we set it to record, and then, so, we're doing, what, an hour and a half podcast? We did, like, 93 minutes of it. It was funny. We, it was we really thought it was good. the best thing. Facts of life we're talking about. And then we realized, after it was done, that only six minutes had recorded, and then it shut off. The battery died. Like, yeah. we didn't realize we had to plug in. Yeah. But the what are you funny recording thing into? is... What are you, what are you uh, recording to? A microphone. We, yeah, we're using a Zoom recorder. <laughs> Oh, is it oh, okay. Right. Tell him, friend. No, Fucking tell we him. <laughs> we don't know. We barely know that. Our friend Tracy helped us. <laughs> yeah, Tracy Carnazzo helped us. She's amazing. And she but forgot to tell you to charge it. <laughs> we're just, cl we're just She gave us something. way too much credit. Like, when we talk about something like, say, Facts of Life, we don't talk about, like, wasn't Facts of Life great? We talk about, like, Lisa Welchel as Blair. What a cunt because she became a born again and wouldn't do a show about sex and they had to have natalie do it and then they brought that cousin in who needs help walking up the handicap ramp like we make fun of stuff right from a place of love if that <laughs> makes love sense. It though. like our That's, whole point of view of facts right. of life episode is that mrs garrett was the biggest cock block for all the girls and ruined their lives tell them why though tell them why because tootie could have been a supermodel and she fucked that up and can i say yeah. Say the best one. Oh, and um, she also could have been a teenage prostitute. So this is New York in the 80s. Yeah. And Tootie snuck away. And to make a long story short, she was in a dirty luncheonette in Times Square. And a pimp, no. And Mike wanted, the pimp. Mike the pimp. And wanted to use her. He said and she had she, the look. She had the look. She was one <laughs> of them. She could have had her own apartment. She could have made more money than anyone else in her own peer group was making. She could have had all the sex she wanted and gotten and paid money for it. made money from it, yeah. Made money from it. And Mrs. Garrett had to come into the city and drag her back to school. That's right. So, I did not remember that episode, and I religiously watched that show. I, it's, my brain is just fucked. It's Do you remember Cousin one. Jerry? Cousin Jerry. Of course you, you do. No, I did. I did. Cousin Tell Jerry, him. Tell him. The overriding factor about Cousin Jerry. Okay. Oh, um, I'm not drunk. I have cerebral palsy shirt. Oh, oh, okay. Blair's yeah, cousin. That one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that if we didn't split. love the stuff that we make fun of, if we didn't love it as much as we do, then it wouldn't work. It would just be mean. It if would we be didn't like, like it, we wouldn't even know what to say about it. Right. Right. So we it's like it's like it really is like roasting. Like in stand-up, how they say when you really love somebody, that's when you can really roast them. And otherwise, like you would see when Comedy Central tried to do it, it would so often fall flat because comics are so dark to begin with. So when they don't really like one another, let alone love one another, it's just ugly. Whereas we love the shit that we make fun of and talk about. Yeah. Tell them about the letters we got about Stockard Channing and stuff. Like that. <laughs> Diatribes. So, Nick, you'll appreciate this. We say that Stocker Channing is way too old to play Rizzo in Greece because she was 33. Yeah, but she looked 50. And then somebody wrote to us mad, and they said, Stocker Channing is great, and you guys are potatoes. You're a combo of potatoes. <laughs> like, a, a lot of people defended it. Yeah. You know, or we said how, like, um, <laughs> so give up all of your morals, get off of the honor roll, go out with the dropout, become a whore, and dress like a roller skating slut in the late 70s and that's, and that's the, the, the moral of, of greece right and then people were like that? like people wrote back about i don't know they just felt like isn't people, it, we love them we don't care if they disagree with we us don't we care. i love them. people from iowa it's you know <laughs> exactly we, we really don't care though it's fun yeah we, we think it's song. funny we do but isn't it funny how i was just actually going to talk about this was how people have such visceral reactions to these things like you see a character like i'll tell you right now for me, watching The Sopranos, the mother, Tony Soprano's Carmella? mom. Oh! No, Carmella, I got a big crush on Carmella. But uh, <laughs> no, Tony Soprano's mother, and then also the mother from Everybody Loves Raymond, mm -hmm. reminds me too much of my grandmother, where it like, 
I'm like, oh, some some episodes when they're giving right. when they're giving the guilt and all that shit, and I'm like, oh no, and I have to like fast forward through it. it We're definitely getting insights time. into what your therapy is like. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to see Long Day's Journey into Night. I think it was the the revival with Philip Seymour Hoffman and Vanessa Redgrave, and at one of the 17 intermissions because it's Eugene O'Neill and it's from Wednesday to the next week. It's so <laughs> long. But Doris Roberts was, now this is a woman who came from the theater. She was like, There's only, she was going on and on about how there was only one ladies room in a theater that was 125 years old. Like it's, <laughs> I remember, like she was, she reminded me of that character, reminded me of Marie. Is that her name on the show, Marie? Yeah. I think so. But yeah, that, and, and my, my grandmother literally looked like her too. Like blonde. Oh. Like, wow. Too much. I, I would have been <laughs> like good. one bathroom in the theater. <laughs> For what that's worth. Yeah, I mean, and I do on. remember cousin Jerry. I just looked her up and that's Blair's whatever. Right. Uh, yeah. And that she was a comedian, like a real comedian. She was. Yeah. Yeah, that she I remember. was. Yeah. I'm biting my tongue. I always say something. Uh, well, yeah. the whole act yeah. is about cerebral palsy though. Well my other job is a brain surgeon. And <laughs> <was> like, <laughs> the audience was very kind. Like they would laugh, like the sconces on the wall would go crooked. Yeah, it right. Was like riotous laughter. <laughs> audiences of nice that. people. That's right. We're not, but audiences are. Yeah. Right. Audiences. Neither are real audiences. You, you guys are. Yeah, we're terrible. Tough people. crowd. Tough crowd. <laughs> tough crowd. That's hilarious, guys. And Nick, guys, what else you got? That's it. Get out of here. No, I just want. <laughs> No, I just want to say thank you for coming on today and taking the time. This was really, really fun. It was good. I haven't seen Frank was, in a thank while. Thank you for so. having us. It was so much fun. Yeah, you guys are great. Wasn't it? It was fun. It was. Yes. Do you want to yeah, talk I'm, about anything? Wanna... Oh, my God. Tell them. About... Isla is the one. First of all, my, my, I always say that I strangled my inner child by the beginning of COVID. Like, I'm dead. I have no hope left and no drive. <laughs> and Isla Mel, she's the... She's the heart, like she's the heart, like Joan Jett was the heart and soul of the Runaways. That's Island of Jiffy Pop culture. We have a store. Yeah, we have Uh, a store, which is crazy. We have have merch, and we actually sold something. She was, I was like, why does she want to put this up so fast? Is someone gonna buy something like the first hour? And someone did. (laughs) Wow, that's awesome. (laughs) Me and Nick put up a merch store, but it's all fake. It is. (laughs) Yeah. On on our website, our Mangina Dialogues. But why is it fake? Because I I was just fucking Ooh, around one day. That. Well, that's that real. real. That's real. We we I have like stickers. That. Well, the thing is, the stuff that is actually real that we do have stick. We have like stickers and bumper stickers and stuff like that. That's not on the store. But okay. like I <laughs> like bobbleheads of me and Nick are available on, in the store, but they're not available in. in <laughs> I just give this to women after dates. I'm like yeah. that looks like the porn that I watch. Nick, are you sure that that's well? That's a different. Or even that, yeah. that's a different show <laughs> but we have we have socks and we have mugs it's cool and yeah. the only reason we did it is because people were asking us for it which yeah. blew our minds well yeah. tell them can you tell them about the t-shirts that are coming out no no don't say it yet it's a surprise tune into our store okay yeah. we have some very special shirts. when are they I'm coming out them. when are they coming out uh, it depends on how fast I can design them, but it's pretty uh, soon. <laughs> where are you making the, the like, shirts? With, the shirts with the funky logo are out now. That's right. what we're selling: the shirts and socks and a, a coffee mug and stuff. But we have other things that were that we actually have to design and whatnot, and those will be coming out probably within a month. That's cool. And yeah. Yeah. are you making it like? Are you doing it on one of these like one onesie like one at a time websites where they? function as your store or did you actually buy the good like you designed them had them made and you're sitting them behind your bookcase no no i no i'm not good at that kind of thing no i'm having Mm -hmm. someone i'm providing the ideas frank and i together yeah and And then you know someone you send an email and then some five-year-old in bangladesh works 18 (laughs) hours a day and makes it for you and we benefit (laughs) we benefit nothing sews a stitch like a five-year-old hand (laughs) And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find us at Jiffy, Jiffy Pop Culture on Instagram is our lifeline. We post tons of shit there and we're out every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. And now we have a website. Life. Yes. Plug it all. Your website, your Instagrams, everything. JiffyPopCulture.com. Yep. Jiffy Pop Culture. We're, we're at that everywhere. So we're on Instagram is Jiffy Pop Culture on Twitter and uh, the dot com is where our 
are to Spotify and I have Apple Music. Stitcher. Stitcher. Probably everywhere you guys are, I would think. Yeah. 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 So Grinder everywhere. Yeah. 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 Grinder profile. It's great. I'm Pop big on Grindr. Nick's doing very well there. <laughs> <laughs> and what should we say? Some, oh, no, we have to keep it a surprise. But Facts of Life came out today. Yes. Right? Yeah, and we can done... give them an exclusive. We can say what the next thing is. <gasps> Do you want to? Still Magnolias? Is that the next thing? Or That's is that it. not the Still next Magnolias. Oh, okay. Still next. Magnolias is next. We've done what's been out already? Mommy Dearest. Mommy Pose. Dearest Pose. Oh, wow, yeah. Devil Wears um, Prada, Carrie. Devil Wears Prada. Devil Let's just say the majority of people who listen to our podcast have had some form of anal in their life. <laughs> <laughs> but not limited to. Not limited to. <laughs> Nick yeah. only recently found out where his prostate was. True, really? true story true story just recently found out like last year bro okay yeah. well, <laughs> it's recently recently it took anatomy, him 31 years anatomy class was a long time ago it's like 31 <laughs> years 12 years ago yeah well it is good to know <laughs> yeah <laughs> look at frank's face that's what that is because <laughs> i was gonna say that like isla has a toolbox of a myriad of things that can help you just oh, i've got everything <laughs> I love blondes. Okay, let's um <laughs> scored. <laughs> all right, well guys, thank you so much. We'll be make sure we plug all your shit. I hope to do this again in person, hopefully, when we things love aren't fucking love it. Uh, weird. Um, but thank you so much, guys. This was so much fun. Yeah, and so good luck thanks with for having you. us. Good it was luck. great. Good luck with it. Thank talk. you. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.